coffee may be the trending beverage, but in Indian households, tea still reigns supreme, and tea breaks are something of a social ritual that are enjoyed no matter how hectic the schedule may be. This inspired Mela's resident chef Yudika to prepare some tasty tea time snacks before boiling the kettle. There's lots of things that I miss about Durban, but one of the things that I miss the most are those impromptu Durban tea parties. There'd always be something sweet, a savory or two, and it was never too much trouble to make up something delicious on the spur of the moment. I'm sharing some of the recipes that used to grace our table at tea time. On the menu, curry chicken pies, chili bites or bhajias as we call them, and for dessert, a Swiss roll that you can make in a flash. I'm starting out with the curry chicken pies first, and for that, I've got some sunflower oil going into a pan, some cumin seeds. This is going to flavor the oil, and they should splatter once they hit the oil. Fry those off for a few seconds. And once they turn a shade darker, let's add some onion. Season the onion with some salt. And this also cuts down on the cooking time of the onions draws out the moisture. The onions are best when they're golden brown. That gives this filling the best flavor. This is a great way to use up a bit of leftover curry. Just wrap it in some puff pastry and it becomes a treat. Onions are golden brown. Just turning down the heat slightly. And next, garlic. Always going in on the side of the pan so it doesn't hit the oil and burn. And next, some red chilli powder. I like the pies quite spicy. I'd say about a tablespoon and a half of red chilli going in. Now you can spice these up or spice them down according to your taste. I've got some chicken here. This is breast fillet and I've just cut it into little pieces. Stir that around and fry off the chicken fillets. There's these lovely aromas coming from the pan. When you're cooking chicken fillet, just remember to turn up the heat and this prevents the meat from stewing. Fillet cooks in just a couple of minutes and it's really important not to overcook the chicken, otherwise it gets too dry. The meat's changed colour. Let's spice it up. For that, I'm using a teaspoon of ground coriander teaspoon of garam masala and a pinch of turmeric. Mix those spices in. A tip for when you're cooking this filling, if it does start to stick, do not add water. Just add tomatoes instead. That adds the moisture. Tomatoes are in. Stir that through. You want quite a thick sauce that just coats these pieces of chicken. I'm adding some par-cooked potato. I've just boiled this and cut it into little cubes. I do think that a pie with a bit of potato is quite special. And next, a cup of frozen peas. Peas are something that you either love or hate. I'm a lover. Can't resist adding them to these pies. Yum, that looks really good. That's our filling done. It's just as easy as that. Now turn off the heat and let the mixture cool down completely before you wrap it in the puff pastry. I'm gonna put this into the refrigerator. The filling's now cold. The last ingredient going in, some chopped coriander. Always add the coriander once the filling is cold to prevent it from wilting and losing those lovely aromas. You can make individual little pies, but the trick here at afternoon tea is to keep it quite simple. And I'm making one large pie, and for that I'm using the best quality butter puff pastry. And I've got the sheet here on a greased baking tray and just scoop that over. You could also do a lamb filling for this or even use mince. I prefer little pieces of chicken or lamb. And remember the mixture must be cold or it will melt the butter in the puff pastry which will ruin the pie. Now just spoon that around and spread it evenly. You just press that down and pack the filling tightly. There's nothing worse than a pie that doesn't have enough filling. That's ready, it's quite neat. Now unroll the second piece of puff pastry and do this quite gently. Remember to always try to keep the pastry as cool as possible. That's a perfect fit. 
and just press it down lightly along the edges to seal in the filling. As you can see here, I haven't rolled out the pastry. That's because it actually does ruin the layers and prevents it from puffing up. So you have to be quite gentle with it. And there we have it, all done. The next step, I've got the beaten egg here and just use a brush to glaze the pie. This is gonna give it a lovely golden brown finish. I always try to save a bit of puff pastry to decorate the pie. I'm just gonna cut out some hearts. Just try to get out as many decorations as you can. So to decorate this pie, just place the hearts on top of the glazed pie. And I think a little decoration on a pie just makes it look so festive. Again, use some egg wash and brush the hearts. These are gonna puff up beautifully and they look so appetizing. Now some sesame seeds going on top of those hearts. You could also use some puppy seeds if you like. This goes into a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 35 to 45 minutes. Let's get started on the chili bites of Baggio's as we call them. Let's get the oil on. And I'm going to whip up the batter while I'm preheating that oil. First thing you need to do is get some chickpea flour going into the mixing bowl. Some boiled potato going in. This is a basic recipe. You could use some spinach leaves, even chopped lettuce in here. Chopped coriander. I love lots of fresh coriander in my cooking. Finely chopped onion. Green chilies. I like it quite spicy. Two tablespoons of cake flour and half a teaspoon of roasted cumin seeds. Now to spice this up a little more, just some red chili powder, so about a teaspoon going in. And a touch of garam masala or any fragrant Indian rub. I'm using one which has cumin, coriander, chili flakes and cardamom. Now add some cold water. The amazing thing about chili bites or bhajias is that they can be served any time of the day, for breakfast, at lunchtime, for dinner, snacks, even at tea. Now, I almost forgot, but baking powder, one teaspoon. This is gonna help these chili bites puff up beautifully. And some salt to season. The batter's really simple to make, and it is ready. To check if the oil's ready, just spoon a little bit of the batter into the hot oil and it should sizzle immediately. The oil's ready, drop little spoonfuls of batter into the hot oil. I think budgers are much like snowflakes, no two are ever the same. Use a slotted spoon and turn the budgers over. There's no need to be embarrassed about these budgers. They come out in all shapes and sizes. And right here, I've got two that I've formed one big budger. It almost looks like a giant budger. Those are just about ready. And I'm going to place them in a sieve to drain off. Don't throw the little bits away. Those are the tastiest bits because they're so crunchy. Well, these are quite large, they're family-sized bhajias. And that's the last of the bhajias done. Swiss roll has to be one of the simplest sweet treats to make. It does take a little bit of courage and a touch of practice too. So the first thing, four eggs in a mixing bowl and we're gonna whisk this until it's light and fluffy. Now, gradually add the sugar. light and fluffy and you know the eggs are ready when they leave a trail on the surface that's visible for about three seconds or longer. Now to this 
add some vanilla paste. And this is a lot more fragrant than vanilla essence. You can actually see the little seeds from the vanilla pod. I'm also using a bit of cardamom to spice up the Swiss roll. We've made this so often in our home, it's almost like not a Swiss roll, but an Indian roll. Next, cake flour. And then two teaspoons of baking powder. A pinch of salt. And fold the ingredients together. And scrape the bottom of the bowl just to make sure the flour is being worked in. Now, sunflower oil. And next, some lemon juice. About two tablespoons. Again, swirl that around. It does take a bit of practice, but if you've got your heart set on it, I'm sure you'll get it right. Now pop this onto a baking tray lined with greaseproof paper. Now smooth the batter evenly, especially around the edges where the Swiss roll tends to be quite thin. This is now ready, and I'm sure the pie is also ready. Let's just have a quick look. Yes, it is ready. It's golden brown and beautiful. Now pop the Swiss roll in. I'm sure the sponge is ready. Let's have a look. Now this is the part where you're going to have to have lots of courage. A few deep breaths and flip it over. Remove the baking paper. And just slice off the crispy edges. Use a serrated knife for this. And now I'm using fig jam going on top. Now you don't have to properly coat it. You don't want the Swiss roll to be too sweet with the jam. And for the tricky part, rolling this. Just lift up and just keep rolling quite tightly as you go along. And there we have it. Just cover it with baking paper and the towel and leave it to set. These are my tea time treats. We've got the fig Swiss roll flavored with cardamom, chili bites or budgers, and to go with that, a spicy curry chicken pie.